I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Can I help you? May I assist you? Can I help you with that? Is there something specific that you're looking for? What are you looking for? These are the questions we hope will meet us if we go to an information desk. Which way to Dr. So-and-so's office? That way. I'm looking for something a very specific, what you gonna call it? Am I in the right place? Yes. Information desks exist to provide simple answers to simple questions. But information desks are not responsible for finding us when we have a question. Rather, we are the ones to seek out, hoping for an answer to what are you looking for? This morning, we hear a familiar account of Jesus calling the disciples. It's familiar because we're used to hearing Jesus be the one who seeks out the disciples. In Matthew, in today's gospel, but also in Mark and Luke, who, by the way, all of them have stories of Jesus' birth, the temptation in the wilderness, and other key details before he calls them first to be disciples— In all three accounts, they speak of Jesus saying to the disciples, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. We're used to hearing, follow me. But since it's a message that we hear a lot, I'm drawn back to last week's sermon that Dr. Jefferson gave, the one talking about John's account of the disciples' calling, not the rest of the accounts. Instead of this week's message of follow me, in John's account from last week, we hear come and see. This week, follow me. Last week, come and see. And even now, that message is the one that continues to resonate with me. I'm feeling the need for something unfamiliar and not familiar these days. You see, in John's account, it's not Jesus who is seeking. He is the one being sought. After hearing John the Baptist, the current leader of the disciples, say, see that guy over there, the one walking? That's the person who I saw the Holy Spirit descend upon and lay there on at his baptism. He is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. That's the one I've been testifying about, the one that I've been waiting for. And at that moment, Andrew and the other disciple heard this, and they literally went to follow Jesus. They were seeking Jesus, not the other way around. Jesus notices the two, uh, turns toward them, and according to John's gospel, the question that is posed to the disciples on the road was literally the first question or words spoken by Jesus. These were the first documented words in John's account spoken by Jesus. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Jesus asks. They respond with a simple question. Where are you staying? And Jesus gives them a simple answer. Come and see. The last time I remember someone asking me, what are you looking for? was, um, well, I I shouldn't say it was right here. It was actually on a Zoom call. It was asked, the question was posed to me by Miss Adrian Hope Sales, our senior warden. It was during this interview process for me to uh, interview for this job. It was in November of uh, 2021. And the thing is, I was seeking this place I knew or felt like I had done the research. I knew what this place was all about. I felt a strong pull to this place, a call to this place. And in the interview, instead of a normal interview question like, what makes you think that you're qualified for such a position? Miss Hope, and I did confirm this, she does not remember asking me this. (laughs) Miss Hope, who was on the calling committee at the time, through her Zoom screen, looked at me, 
with care and curiosity in her eyes, and she asked, what is it that you're looking for? The question kind of cut right to my soul. I felt like it was an invitation to not just be performative of why I'm the best suit or best fit for here, but she was really curious. I wanted to know, and I actually kind of made me think, well, what am I looking for? In other interviews with other churches, I had given kind of a canned box speech of why I thought I would be a good rector. But at her invitation, I felt like being a little bit more authentic, maybe a little bit more vulnerable. Because she was asking the question not to the future, experienced, or well-polished priest. She was asking it to a flawed relatively inexperienced priest who is really scared and uncertain of his future, but desperately wanted to do something great. What are you looking for, she asked. So I paused. I took a deep breath and decided to speak honestly and from the heart. I got nothing to lose, I said. I said, I'm looking for a place to use my gifts, a place where those gifts can help make a difference, a, willing, a place willing to take risks, including the risk of having a young, idealistic, optimistic, overly excited priest that breaks the mold of what a priest can and should look like. I'm looking for a community where I feel safe and accepted. I need the experience of grace and love in order for me to face the challenges that I need to help me grow. I'm looking for a place that will help me become the best version of myself, God's version of myself, so that I can then help others be their best versions. I'm looking to do great things to contribute heaven, becoming part of this world, this space right here and right now, and not just some place that we go when we die. Ultimately, I got the job. (laughs) But after being here for just shy of a year, it feels like Hope's answer in the rest of the calling committee, when they heard my responses, very complex, very um, real responses to their questions, my yearnings, and looking back on it now, they basically said, come and see. The funny thing is now I'm the one asking the questions. I have the pleasure of meeting new people all the time, and specifically newcomers that come here on Sunday mornings. People find their way through our doors for many different reasons, but all are seeking something. They come here yearning and looking for something that they don't currently have. When we sit down and have coffee or a meal, I have the honor of asking with the same love and compassion that was given to me, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? And as you can imagine, the answers are just as rich and complex as what I gave. What are you looking for, I ask? Here's some responses. I'm looking for a place to grow in my faith. I'm lonely, and I'm looking to meet people. I'm looking for people who want to know who I am. I want to be seen. I want to know a God that is loving and loves me. I'm looking to be accepted just as I am, imperfections and all. I'm looking for a place where my children can learn about God, and not just a God of judgment or punishment, but a God who knows them and who loves them deeply. I've been a member of a church where all they do is talk, but never act. I'm looking to be a member of a community where I can confidently know my money is being used for God's work. For a church that puts their faith into action. For a church who, is, who not only sees the marginalized or the prejudice, sexism, economic injustice, or systemic racism that exists in this world, but is actively taking steps with God's help 
towards making a better world. I ask a simple question and I receive complex answers. But in response, in the great uh, 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 example of Miss Hope and of Jesus, I give the same response to all of them. Come and see. Come and see this place. See it for yourselves. I, to mention, um, when I came and saw and have seen this place for the past year, I've seen that all my hopes have been real. They've been actualized from the people who are here every single week. Come and see, is my response. Come and see the amazing new work of the Children's Church School program. Come and see Bible studies and classes that teach a very different message that most have not heard in other places. Come and see worship that inspires and transforms hearts to love and trust God. Come and see how fellow members of this community will show up and be there in your times of greatest need. Come and see the joy and laughter that pervades every inch of this space. Come and see what happens when you feed people, literally and figuratively, physically, spiritually. And come and see how a community can grow and become its best self when all are welcome, no matter who you are and no matter how unworthy you may feel. Come and see. All saints, this is who we are. This is us right now. Think about where we've come from and think about where we may be going in the future. Think about what is next. Next week is our annual meeting and I've been doing a lot of thinking and praying and preparation. And I've been left wondering, if we're this great and amazing already, <laughs> Only God knows what we're going to be doing in the future. But what I do know is that in the midst of us carrying out God's will for us and the lives of those surrounding us, we still find ourselves being like those two disciples in John's gospel last week. We feel the need to follow Jesus, and we are the ones who need to continue to seek God. It's now us that are being asked, what are you looking for? What are you looking for individually, personally? And what are you looking for all saints collectively? In response to whatever our answers might be, and I guarantee you they will be complex. No matter how uncertain or scary this time may feel, the answer will be just as simple as the question before it. With confidence and faith, know that Jesus said it 2,000 years ago and continues to say it in the lives of hearts of all of us who are compassionate and loving with grace. Know that Jesus will lovingly and compassionately invite us to simply come and see. Amen.